Louise Nevelson was born in Kiev, Ukraine in 1899, and she moved to Rockland, Maine in 1905. She is well known for her monochromatic abstract sculptures. One of our vocabulary words for this unit is monochromatic. Mono means one, and chroma is another word for color. Louise Nevelson's sculptures almost look like a puzzle as they are assembled in a box-like form and placed in an upright position. These sculptures often have an impressive height as some would reach 10 or 20 feet high. For a period of time, she moved to Munich to study under Hans Hoffmann and later was an assistant to Diego Rivera. However, she came back to New York in the 1930s during the time of the Great Depression. Nevelson and her son would often walk up and down the streets of New York City searching for scraps of firewood. Later, these scraps of wood became an inspiration for her assemblage art. These scavenger hunts left quite an impression on Nevelson's son, who also grew up to be a sculptor. Nevelson separated herself from other artists of the time by incorporating recycled wood into her creations. By using wooden objects found discarded around her city, she assembled unique sculptures that not only tell her story, but her father was also a woodcutter and sort of a junk collector when they first moved to America. Her assemblages are massive yet detailed, industrial yet natural, and they were inspired by cubism. Most of her sculptures were painted black, white, or gold. One of her most famous sculptures was created in 1959 for the Museum of Modern Art. This was an installation, meaning the artwork was designed specifically for the museum, and it was called Dawn's Wedding Feast. It consisted of a full room of all white wood assemblage pieces, including four chapels, a bride and a groom, a wedding cake, furniture, and columns that were meant to represent the guests. Each piece of artwork had been crafted from discarded wood pieces and reassembled to create symmetrical figures. What a fun room to explore! Later, this installation was broken down into 16 individual sculptures, and you can find them in different museums all around the country. Nevelson was not afraid to follow her unique direction in life, which takes a great deal of strength. However, Nevelson knew that her art was her calling in life, and she made that hard decision. I'm trying to heal the land through my art. She wanted to heal people.